22nd, 2016. And the purpose of our meeting is to have a public hearing uh, on the mayor's capital plan. But first, uh, we'll do our roll call. Councilor Murphy? Here. Councilor Adams? Not here. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor LaBarge? Present. And I'll point out that uh, the Finance Committee meeting, because it's for the capital plan, is posted as a city council meeting. We have two other counselors who are with us tonight. They're not members of finance, but they're here to see the presentation. Uh, uh, Councilor Donald and Councilor Scare are here as well. The mayor is here, and Susan Wright, the finance director, is here. And we have one member of the public, Alex Gieb, from Riverside Drive. He's here. Um, so the first thing we need to do is approve minutes of March 3rd and March 9th. Do I have a motion? Any comments or corrections? All in favor? Aye. Okay, so can we have a motion to open our public hearing with regards to the capital? I'll make a motion to open up the public hearing. I'll hold the approval this Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. So we're going to start off with the mayor doing a presentation on the capital plan, and then we'll take public comment. Good evening, uh, members of the Finance Committee and the City Council. Uh, I'm just going to quick give you a quick overview of the plan and then just touch on some of the key projects. Um, you have a copy of the plan, and there's a copy displayed up there. Um, and basically, we try to follow the same format where we just kind of lay out for you um, uh, what the capital improvement program is. Again, it's called a program under the charter. This is in, in accordance with the charter, um, Section 7-5. Um, and it basically is supposed to, to be a roadmap for the next five years of the kinds of capital needs we have for the city, the kinds of projects, and how we would anticipate funding them over the next five fiscal years. Um, you are not being asked to approve the actual funding. You're not, you know, it's not a borrowing or, or uh, an authorization to spend any money. It's really just showing uh, that we are planning for the long term and that we are trying to uh, make sure that our capital infrastructure is being properly planned and maintained. Um, we have in here definitions of what um, we consider capital improvements. Generally, they're not ordinary maintenance, run-of-the-mill small items. They're, they're more um, uh, larger items that, uh, that come up um, over time, usually in excess of $10,000. In terms of the process that I follow, um, I uh, work very closely with uh, Susan Wright, our finance director, obviously. I also put together an ad hoc um, capital improvement program committee. Um, it, it included uh, your chair of this committee, uh, Councillor Murphy. Um, it also included a representative from the school committee, um, Vice Chair Zukowski, um, and then um, members of the public. Um, we call in all the department heads um, who submit all of their uh, various capital needs. Um, the committee then um, discusses them, and they actually help us at least give a rank to the project. They don't rank them, you know, one to two hundred, but they give them a rank in terms of high priority, medium priority, sort of long-term priority. And then we take that information, um, we take a look at what our funding um, uh, looks like over the next five years, and a lot of that is based on our borrowing ability, based on our current debt capacity and what we believe our future debt capacity will be over the next five years, and then we try to populate the five-year program um, with, uh, with, with needed projects. Um, so that's the guidelines. Um, there's also some information about um, the funding sources that we use, and you'll see these all <coughs> out in different parts of the plan. Some of them, for the smaller ones, we'll pay for out of cash, cash capital, which you appropriate as part of the budget. Some of them will come from the free cash or undesignated fund balance that happens at the end of uh, each fiscal year. Um, we also have the capital stabilization uh, uh, a fund that we've been building up over time. Um, and we have a, a plan or a methodology by which we eventually draw down from that. Um, the parking receipts reserved for appropriations fund, which is all of our parking uh, revenues that go into a fund to help support capital projects and parking. We've got the various revolving funds. CPA funds some of our projects that are supported, debt service supported by CPA. Um, and then often we have reprogram funds where we have a project that we complete, there's money left over, and we reprogram it. The other major source are the enterprise funds, water and sewer, um, and stormwater. And we are coming to you sort of simultaneously. You're considering our water and sewer rates um, and some of the assumptions around projects that we're going to borrow and pay for are based on the revenues from those rates. Um, so uh, the um, actual uh, total in terms of, of what we see over the next 
uh, five years, we're projecting about 97 projects over the next five years, uh, totaling $59,575,423. That's the total of those five year uh, worth of projects, um, at least as we know them in a preliminary stage, obviously they're not fully bid and, and anything like that, but those are the projections. Um, and we break them down for you by fiscal year. Um, we break them down uh, by all the various categories, general fund, enterprise fund. We try to show you what portions are paid for out of uh, debt excluded, levy limit, um, water, sewer, solid waste, stormwater, um, and then we um, uh, and then we go literally drill, keep drilling deeper and deeper uh, down into um, each particular fiscal year. And then finally at the back, you actually get the copies of the CIP documents for each individual project. So you can read the actual narrative, um, you can read um, why the project is needed, you can read about you know, what, what, uh, what measures will be taken to um, to implement the project and what it may cost to maintain whatever that particular capital item is over time. I did want to highlight some of the key projects that we are um, putting on this capital improvement plan. Um, and I and there's a the sort of an overall table that occurs, I'm trying to think what page it's on. Um, but it is on, let's see, it's the first major table. Uh, that happens right after the narrative is complete. Um, I don't think I have a page number on here, but it's, it's, it's the first one after the narratives and after the um, small tables. But basically, to go down through it, um, you'll see uh, it's broken down by different departments. We've got the building department, where again, we're continuing um, over time to replace our different uh, vehicles uh, for the building department. We're actually have been moving to small hybrid SUVs, the Subarus, which have been really good. They're good in the weather, um, they're good on gas, and it allows our inspectors to get out and around the city. Um, so we are projecting over the next five years continuing to, uh, to, to replace those vehicles. Central Services, which is kind of our hub for anything um, related to uh, major building projects. You'll note in the Central Services line, there are projects across all departments. Um, and, but often we put them in central services because they're sort of the facilities um, a department that implements many of them. Um, you'll see one major project that you are aware of and we've been working on is the LED streetlight program. Uh, we did come to you for some funding uh, to do some of the specking of that. Um, that's going to be a project that Chris Mason has been working on that's going to have a really great payback time in terms of electricity savings. I think it's a five-year payback on the investment in terms of the savings, and obviously we'll have a much more energy efficient. Just um, take it along with you. Where, where are you reading from? Um, it just table it's on there. Or? It's just really small. Yeah, so if you look, if you look, if you look it's right up here under you. central services, I'm just kind of highlighting the projects. It's kind of small. I'm sorry, but no, no, it's um, okay. I just don't see the word central services. What's the um, shading signified? The shading uh, in the, the, green. the green. The green. Yeah. The green. The green is just. Those are the ones that. Within this list, oh, there, I have lines hidden, and those are the ones we couldn't have put oh, on. So green, yes. was, green was my way of saying we're funding this one. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just couldn't see that it's in that yeah. left. It's in the, it's it's in the, left the third one down yeah. under central the services. Hall. Third one down behind <laughs> LED Street. Yes. yes, exactly. Um, you'll see various <laughs> paving and roof projects at some of our city buildings. Um, you'll see Forbes Library. We have a couple of big projects that we are going to begin to design. Uh, work on their window replacement, which is something they've been wanting to do for several years, replacing all of their old drafty windows, as well as uh, specking out a climate control system for their special collections um, at the library. Um, they have a special collections room that has to be temperature controlled 24 seven, but because they don't have a zone system, they basically have to run the, the library's systems um, more than they need to. Parking garage, uh, central services parking, you'll see we're continuing work on uh, the parking garage repairs we've been doing over the last uh, several years, um, completing some of the caulking of the joints, uh, waterproofing membrane, uh, working on the drainage system. That's a longer term project that we're trying to pick away at. Northampton Public Schools, you'll see a number of projects, um, including uh, some of the roof projects that you have approved, uh, given the school's MSBA authority to uh, seek MSBA matching funds for, uh, but we have to borrow or, or put in our capital plan funds for the city's match. 
Um, you'll see uh, uh, some security upgrades at JFK, um, a lot of cafeteria uh, projects. Uh, we are trying to get to that gymnasium floor at Ryan Road, Councilor. It's in the five-year plan. I know that's been one that you've been um, you've been uh, focused on, and I know the folks at Ryan Road have been wanting to ha happen. Um, and uh, and then some of the other uh, grounds equipment and other equipment that are needed by the schools. Um, in terms of, let's just see. Let me make sure I get to the right one next. Huh. I think Susan this one. Yeah, didn't, didn't print all of them, so I'm just going to switch to this one. Did it flip to the other side? Yeah, this is after public schools is oh, I see. dispatch. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. Dispatch. Okay, so we got truncated, but then yeah. that's it's just good. dispatch. Okay, good. So the other one is dispatch. Um, under public safety. The big project there is replacement of our radio consoles. These are the computer consoles that the, um, that the dispatchers use to take calls. Um, they're kind of being held together with duct tape and, and, uh, and the, um, the actual computer system itself is, is uh, outmoded and so we've been planning for several years um, to purchase these new uh, radio consoles. Uh, so that's part of it. Another um, major um, overhaul that's happening, and this is going to be actually a citywide overhaul, is our radio technology. Um, we have now kind of a hodgepodge of radios, uh, police, fire, DPW, parking, schools, and in many cases the technology is different and the radios don't all communicate on the same frequency, so we find people having to do workarounds. So we are, we've done a radio study in FY 2017, uh, which is going to have us sort of map out a, a holistic radio system and in some cases even consolidate some of the shared tower or some of the separate towers into shared towers uh, for police DPW and for um, fire rescue because the technology has improved so much uh, since the last time we made this investment. So that's the, that's the uh, dispatch one. Then we get to the big um, DPW uh, section and you'll see a number of water and sewer enterprise projects. These are many of the ones that you saw as part of the discussion related to water and sewer rates. Um, and, uh, and you'll see you know, levy assessment and repair and a storm uh, water uh, enterprise as well as storm line replacements. Uh, we've got all the usual categories in the general fund. Um, including our continued effort at street resurfacing. We're gonna continue our efforts to put city money into our street resurfacing program to match the, um, the chapter 90 monies. We're gonna have a half a million this year, half a million the next year, and then we're gonna to try to ramp that up to 750 in the remaining three years. Um, we're also continuing uh, the cemetery preservation plan. We're actually expanding it to a couple of other cemeteries in the city. Um, I know that uh, in Ward 3, we've been working on the Bridge Street uh, Cemetery, and now we're going to start working on preservation efforts at some of the other, um, other ones. We're also going to be moving forward on a new fuel depot, uh, which is a project that's been long overdue at the DPW. Uh, we were holding out on it uh, because it was thought to be something that could be done at the same time we built a new facility. Um, that's sort of farther on the horizon, so we want to move forward with uh, that fueling depot. Um, and that's a depot where all city vehicles come to fuel, and it's sort of a, a gas station, if you will, that's buried underground and, and has a pump station above. Moving to fire rescue, a big investment, uh, which we're projecting for FY 2017. We want to replace the second uh, uh, engine tanker. You may remember a couple of years ago, we replaced one of the other uh, 1990 uh, era uh, fire uh, fire engines. Uh, we now want to try to do the other one that needs replacement, um, and so uh, that's we're trying to slate in the early part of this five-year plan. You'll see other um, communications equipment, but but the big one in um, in fire is really that fire engine. That's been the big one we've been going after. Then you'll see some other engine replacements and some other uh, replacements that we're doing. Um, to try to keep some of our other pieces uh, operational. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that takes care of that one. Um, planning, a uh, project I want to highlight under planning and sustainability. This one actually came out of the downtown parking study. 
uh, which recommended that we really needed to do a better job in terms of our parking signage and just our general directional signs downtown people coming to the city knowing how to find parking how to um, how to find the garage how to find uh, other facilities um, one of the recommendations of that study was to hire a consultant to really help us study that many cities around us have been doing that um, so we put money in the budget to do a downtown slash parking wayfinding um, study to help us uh, with all that um, signage effort um, you'll also see that we've um, got some funding in there for um, Wayne's uh, Wayne Fiden's continued efforts on rail trail uh, designs for various extensions um, as well as some of uh, we also have a small amount of money over the five years for tax title uh, city property that may be valuable for conservation or for other uh, purposes that we put in there so that is the um, that takes care of that one um, in terms of the other public safety, I just wanna, yeah, I think we've lost a page on this, Susan. Because we sort of jumped and we don't have, I didn't police. Maybe that's all police. That's, yeah, no, that's, that's police. it. Okay. That's it. Okay. So the final one is police. Uh, major project in police is something that's actually a, a long overdue uh, completion of the, uh, police station project we are going to try to finish the firing range uh, which was designed in the in the basement uh, all of the all the actual hard infrastructure the cement sort of coffin that's in there um, a lot of the um, uh, wiring and, and other stuff was put in but we didn't have the funds to actually outfit it with all of the lead uh, catching equipment and some of the other special air handling equipment and then all of the just range stuff uh, so that actually was kind of value engineered out of the uh, police station project uh, because we couldn't afford to do it within the amount that the taxpayers had voted on. So we said we would try to do it in a future year. So we are now going to come back and do that. We've, um, we've spread it out over two years because parts of it can be done um, in one year and then the final work of it done in the second year. Um, we think that we'll get it done. There may be some additional expenses. I know I've heard from people in the community who've even offered to do uh, private fundraising or donations to help support that. So we'll keep the public posted on that in terms of, I know there are people out there who want to help support that. And then um, we, um, you'll see that there's no cruisers uh, in this uh, budget. And you'll also note under fire rescue, there's no ambulance replacement in that, in that capital budget. We've now fully transitioned toward uh, putting those types of replacement vehicles in their regular budgets under OOM. Uh, we feel that you know police cruisers are part of their regular equipment as are ambulances. And so rather than um, coming to the capital program every year, we've now tried to build those into um, the regular operating budget under other than ordinary maintenance on a regular replacement schedule so we can fund them that way. So I believe that covers all of the um, different categories of the 97 projects. Um, May into the breakdown, and I'll answer any questions. Well, just, um, I don't know if you just over, there's the big ticket item on the voice over IP oh, yes. replacement. That's a- uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, that is one, I, I, you may recall I came to you um, a few months ago seeking um, some initial funding to do design work on that. And that funding would replace our voice over internet um, uh, phone system. As I described to you before, um, we bought at the time a state-of-the-art 3Com system. Um, 3Com has uh, since, uh, they were sold to somebody else and then that company basically dropped them. So they no longer provide any support. They no longer provide any equipment. And our, and our server is actually um, starting to get a little buggy uh, and uh, and so we believe that we need to get that system replaced because if it goes down, basically our phone system's down, and there's no no one to actually repair it or replace it at this point. Um, so that's one that we actually will probably be coming forward to you with an order before the next fiscal year because we need to get that implemented as soon as possible. Um, and we've been working with a. Um, with that designer that has been meeting with all the city departments to understand what their needs are to really design the system, both for the city and for the school and for the libraries. It's a, it's a citywide system. So that is a 
big ticket, but it's one that we have to do. So any other? Uh, the only other one I want to highlight, just because we have a we have a Bay State Village resident in attendance. Um, many of you have been familiar with the with the Clement Street Bridge uh, project. Um, we did, under um, one of my previous capital plans, um, hire an engineer to actually go and and examine the bridge and update what needed to be done to the bridge to. Um, keep it safe and allow it to continue to stay open. You may recall it was closed a few years ago uh, when inspectors found some, uh, some, some problems with it. Um, and so you will see in here that I do have funding in the Clement Street Bridge, for the Clement Street Bridge under DPW. And this is funding to carry out some of the needed repairs that the, uh, that the um, engineer has recommended need to be done to basically preserve the bridge for another four or five years until we figure out what the what the overall plan is. And we're going to be requesting, working with our state uh, delegation to try to seek um, assistance from DOT with that project because we sort of seem to be in a cycle where we, we the bridge reaches problems, we try to repair it, patch it, but it seems like there's going to need to be some major um, replacement work done over time. But this will at least uh, carry out the recommendations of that uh, structural engineer and allow the bridge to, to be uh, maintained for the next several years. So I wanted to highlight that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that Alex and the, uh, the Bay State Village Association has been very actively uh, pursuing. And at that point, I'll be quiet and I'll answer questions. So, uh, Councilor Bart. Yes. Mayor, on the replacement of the 1993 engine taker. Yes. Tanker, anyways, my question, how many years do they actually last, these tankers? Yeah, um, you know, it, a, know lot of it's, a lot of it's based on hours and mileage, um, and I know that particular engine. Because that's 20, what, 23 years old? Yeah, and that particular engine, I know they've had to rebuild the engine at least once, okay. and they at one point, it's had, it's had a number of mechanical problems. Um, they tend to look at hours, engine hours. Um, I think if you look at the narrative in the back, I believe they have more detailed information on how many hours that particular engine has. Um, but that one and the other engine uh, were the two that were have been identified for several years for replacement. We were only able to do one a couple of years ago. Yeah, I can't put my hands on that, but okay. it, it's in that description. I'll give you that information. Okay, thank you. And we are gonna buy, um, like we did before, we're going to buy kind of a stock engine. Uh, we're not doing a super duper custom engine. Um, and uh, we're going to buy kind of a stock engine off a bid list and then sort of customize it for our needs. So we're trying to be frugal with the purchase. The other engine seems to have worked out really well. So, mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Dunn. Yeah, just a question on um, two, two lines that are next to each other, sidewalks and traffic. Cars. Yes. Okay. I knew you'd notice that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Where's the money? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have, we've put money, as you know, I started putting money into that line item for the past, since right. I think 13, we started funding right. that line item. Um, we ran into some issues on FY17 um, that caused us to need to rejigger that a little bit. And the reason why I felt comfortable taking that, that money out for one year was we, we have a backlog of funds right. that have not been spent yet. Okay. Um, that I need to, that we need to get deployed. So those don't go away. Those do not go away. Oh, they they okay. are stay. They stay. They're not gone. And okay. so we actually have money from last year that has oh. not been spent. Yet. Well, that makes perfect sense. Yes. So yeah. um, and one of the issues has been some of the um, changes in leadership in the department, and they've been a little bit strapped this year. So because we haven't spent the 16 money, I felt comfortable in sort of skipping a year. Uh, because we needed that funding, but as you can see, I continue the uh, commitment in the fall in four years. Right. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And related to that, in the actual request on, uh, on sidewalks towards the back, um, it references a, a list of priority sidewalks that I guess in the past has been developed by transportation parking, but was that just part of the Sustainable Northampton plan? Yeah, plan we, we, did have a, we did have a list, okay. and, um, and I know that uh, I know that planning and sustainability worked on that list, and okay. basically what it amounted to at the time was um, primarily uh, uh, areas of the city that had schools that did not have adequate mm -hmm. sidewalks 
Um, we had a few cases where kids, even though they lived close enough, we still had to bus them because there wasn't safe sidewalks. For years off of um, Bridge Road, we had to bus kids from relatively nearby neighborhoods because there was no sidewalk for them to safely get to school. So we have, so I know the list at that point, I know Cook Avenue was another one we did um, that kind of takes you over to where Smith Oak is. Uh, I know we did that one, um, and we've done other uh, sidewalk projects. So I think the priority list, and this may be something TPC wants to pull out of the drawer and take a look at, was primarily focused on looking at those gaps where we have um, unsafe school routes. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then obviously, as part of traffic calming uh, proposals, there may right. be there may be requests for sidewalks as well. Right. Yeah. That, that fits that. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Scarrett? Yeah. Um, yeah, back to the, the study for signage for yes. downtown um, and parking. Is, do you anticipate that, so the money in the first year is for the study, and then the money in the second year is for implementation of the recommendation? Yeah, but, um, let me just take a look at that again. Which uh, project is that? The way fund? The way yeah. Fund. Under planning, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me um, yeah. It was like 70 in the first year. And then yeah. Um, I believe that is the plan, is to have enough funding to be able to not only do the plan, but then to be able to actually purchase and implement the signage. Um, but I can verify that for you. Um, because otherwise that would be a lot of money those two studies yeah um, so let me and maybe you can even verify I'm trying to find the page. Um, it's on a, oh you're looking for the actual yeah. sheet yeah there's a sheet on each project right yeah. I'm looking at it right now but it, there's no page number to help you out there yeah okay. this is the way finding okay sheet. I can verify that for okay. you but that would be my understanding okay. mm -hmm. Councilor Lombard do you have another question yeah, just a question mayor how do we actually find out what the list is on sidewalks where could we get that list well i was that's what i was just talking to uh Councilor o'donnell about. because on um, ryan road which i know you know mm -hmm. and mary claire worked very closely with Ned huntley in the area around before you come to um brookside circle off of ryan road in acrebrook that it's very dangerous in the winter time. We've been working on this for several, several years and the children are ending up walking to school out in the road. So they keep saying they're gonna do something but nothing's ever done and it's been almost eight, nine years now with the flooding that's occurring on these sidewalks and the children have to go out in the road to walk. Okay. Hmm. So okay. I thought I would bring that yeah. to your attention and that met with my residents and said well you know it's going to cost money for the drainage and so forth like that nothing's ever ever been done yeah it, definitely one of our big challenges not only trying to build new sidewalks but to fix ones that we have that have deteriorated it's up it's you know it's um we have the uh we have the pavement management system and and we we need to work on a similar sidewalk management system because it's just it's a huge I drive around the city, I see them, tree roots have, uh, in some cases, have uh, damaged them. We have cracked sidewalks. Um, so that's a whole other uh, uh, paving blitz that we have to do. Um, so so we'll, I'll, I'll try to work with um, the chair of TPC to, to dig out whatever the most recent version of that list is. And I think Wayne had worked on it um, as part of the transportation policies and transportation plans and things like that. So probably do for updating and who knows maybe as part of that uh, walk bike or hampton plan it could be uh, it could be looked at so just a question um tax title is there money still left over for that because i noticed there's no funding for tax title this year is there money left over from last year so they can yeah he has yes. not spent it all because i know it's yes. slowed up some they cleaned up the worst of it so yes. there's still money available yeah. for that if opportunity arises yeah and yeah, no, he's definitely, uh, he does have funding left for that. Okay, good, yeah. so that program can still happen. Any other questions from this side for the mayor before we take public comment? No, I just wanted to say I'm so happy about Clement Bridge because I remember with Councillor Alex Giesland, that was a big concern way back about that bridge and 
I'm glad you're on that. 25 years ago. I know. <laughs> And I will try to get you answers to those questions now. And said, I'm happy that we're finally polishing off the police station project. And, you know, they've had to qualify, they have to qualify more often now, and they have to go and get another facility for that. And it's and it just be nice if they can do it in their own building yes. and they can practice in between shifts and things. It's mm -hmm. going to be nice to have that squared away and in house so they can live up to their requirements and not have to go off site somewhere and spend overtime and all of that. We, we pay to go off site to use the other yeah. yeah, typically we rent a trailer, a special trailer that we hire. If they have to rent a trailer, they go to the revolver yeah. club up in your neighborhood. Right. This way they can stay and do it, they don't have to wait for good weather, they can do it when, mm -hmm. you know, between shift whenever, it's more efficient. And they can do it, that doesn't have to all be done at once, it can be done. Yeah, they can do it between yeah. shift and they don't have to do overtime and that would be great. Yeah. Excellent. Um, no more questions from up here? No. Then time for our one member of the public to come and make public comment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Captain uh, Well, thank you. Uh, Alex Giesel, 164 Riverside Drive. Um, just a little history, I'll be very brief. Um, we're today about where we were in 1988. Um, the bridge is seriously corroded, seriously um, it's becoming a safety issue. And uh, there was a, a plan uh, to replace the bridge with a new one. And there was uh, a, really a large uh, outpouring of public support for the old bridge and rehabilitating it, principally from the neighborhood, but also from historic interest in the city and statewide. And actually, uh, the state uh, supported that. And in the end, the decision was made to rehabilitate the bridge about in the early 90s. And so, uh, but nobody really talked about it. We didn't think about that. In fact, it's an iron bridge and it needs maintenance. It needs money allocated every year so that the maintenance is done. And we have not done really any maintenance. There have been some repairs, but no maintenance uh, for 25 years. So we're back where we were. And I certainly support the mayor's request. I think it's 125,000 for the uh, supplementary support system. This takes some of the stress off the corroded members and prolongs the life of the bridge. But it doesn't really answer the question. It doesn't really help it. It's no, it doesn't make the bridge, uh, you know, it's not a solution to the problem. It's a sort of kicks the can down the, the roadways while we think about it. So I guess I'm here to ask the, uh, the council and this committee to really think about it. That this is, uh, if the city decided to rehabilitate the bridge, and that's a real, uh, I, I urge you to look at the um, Greenman um, Pediment uh, uh, report. It's just, it's the new report that the mayor uh, referred to. And it was finalized in February. Uh, it's uh, Greenman Pedersen. And they conclude that, uh, that it's not readily apparent that rehabilitation or replacement is the obvious solution. Um, but they do say that if the city started uh, rehabilitation in the next couple of years, they wouldn't need to do this supplementary system. Um, it would have to do it on its own dollar, at least at the beginning. But um, again, in, in 1990, the state came up with $850,000 for the repair. Uh, there was, uh, at least for a while, there was a half a million dollars in the last bond bill allocated for the Clement Street Bridge. There's the, it's, a, it's a truly a historic structure. It's one of the last uh, crew trusts uh, bridges still operating in the state and in the country. Um, it was a breakthrough when it was, when it was designed and built and they were widely used, particularly in railroads. Um, and again, I think that the neighborhood supports the rehabilitation, the preservation of this. But anyway, I think it's time really that the city made a decision one way or the other uh, about it. They don't want to do this. And part of that decision is the maintenance. That's the hard part. But it needs at the same time it, uh, that if you decide to rehabilitate the bridge, then you need to bite that bullet and realize that it needs to be maintained. Thank you. It's actually named after one of our predecessors. Yes, it's the Jack Fitzgerald Memorial Bridge. <laughs> he was the counselor in Ward 5 at the time and was a strong supporter of the bridge. 
I got uh, <coughs> support at the state level for it. And I should say that the, uh, the Friends of the Clemens Street Bridge uh, have, well, haven't actually submitted, but are about to submit an application for uh, the National Register as a historic uh, uh, site. I'm just on the topic of the bridge, maybe for the mayor. So the um, the capital uh, plan is the fifty thousand in fiscal year seventeen, and then the hundred and twenty-five in fiscal year eighteen. So what about the uh, hundred thousand needed in rep in uh, repairs each year for the for the maintenance that Councillor Eastland? Yeah, we we um. We do have a request, well, first of all, we do have a request into the state. It is in a bond bill. I'm actually going to be talking to Representative Cocott about that because he's going to be talking to the administration about some of those items. Um, so we are, we do have, uh, I think it's like $500,000 in a transportation bond bill toward this repair project. Okay. Um, and and I, I, I understand the concerns of that neighborhood at this particular bridge. I love the bridge, but we had we have so many other competing projects that we're trying to balance, and um, and so that's why we have opted to take the recommendation of the um, engineer to go ahead and uh, and fix it. I mean, most bridges in Massachusetts are funded by the state. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a, it's not something that that many cities are fixing sure. their own bridges. Um, it's a state obligation. We've talked to them about when. We could expect funding from them as part of their bridge repair program, um, and the difficulty is this is such a low um, use bridge in terms of just the amount of. I mean, they tend to prioritize them by, you know, the Memorial Bridge in Springfield or the bridges that they're fixing on 91 or you know those kinds of bridges. It, it comes so far down on the list that um, they're telling us it's going to be years and years until we might come up on the list for funding from the state. So how, where are we hoping to get? So we're we're going to devote the fifty thousand and then the one twenty five. So to making the, uh, the to making the repairs that the engineer says yeah. will, and I can get a copy of that report out to you and just okay. not complete it. Um, and so that's what we are. That's what we're. That's what our you know, city engineers are recommending we do in the short term. And then obviously this is a fluid document, and so. Um, what you see here is a snapshot today. Uh, that doesn't mean that we won't find funding to be able to, to continue those maintenance efforts in the future. Um, probably, ideally, if it's maintenance, it shouldn't be a capital item. If it's really truly maintenance, mm -hmm. it needs to be built into a um, into a maintenance budget. Um, we don't have a bridge maintenance department in the city because typically, again, bridges are maintained by the state. So this is what's just one of those conundrums because it is such a unique historic bridge. So we're investing the money and hoping that the 100000 per year for required for maintenance. Well, we're investing the money. We're seeking state funding to pay okay. for the longer term repairs. Okay. And then we'll have to reassess in a couple of years about where we are. Okay. Um, that's sort of my approach at this point. Yep. Mm -hmm. Keep it going and yep. hope yes. we get some state money to yes. really do the job right. I know. Councilor Nall? There was a there was an accelerated bridge repair program yes. in the state a few years ago. Yes, there and, is. And they looked at assume every bridge and did they yes, give they this did. bridge a classification too now? Yeah, it's in it's in the hundreds, like the high. Okay. I mean, it's it's pretty uh, low on their list. Yes, it has needs, but the yeah. fact that it doesn't carry, you know, it it's is rated. The there is a restriction on it, a weight restriction. They do come out and inspect it. Um, we do have bridge inspectors that come out and they certified it to stay open. Um, uh, but there's just in terms of the kinds of Bridges that, that that those programs apply uh, apply to, it's just way down on the list. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's tough. I mean, we everyone the whole state falls behind on fixing roads. Yes. And bridges. Yes. And, and sidewalks. And, and, and the city steps and up and spends its own money to fix yes. roads. And, yeah. Know, so yeah, yeah. It's a tough situation. It but is. Um, you know, it's hard enough to get them to come out and fix just the South Street Bridge, which is a state bridge. You know, the bridges on South Street. Uh, there have been years where there's rebar coming up through the sidewalks, and there's you know it takes us years to get them to come and just fix those, and those are really heavily traveled and walked bridges. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and we kind of kind of watch out for the state because uh, didn't they send us a you got to close the bridge at 4:30 on a Friday afternoon with a long weekend yeah. or something, and they closed it for like a year, yeah. and in the end it was three days work. Well, that's what happened. It, it, you know, it happened. Got to watch out for the, yeah. It happened when the when the bridge collapsed in Minnesota, 
and there was a bridge collapse in yes. Minnesota, and then suddenly bridge inspectors all around the country started looking at all their files and saying, oh crap, we better you know, close any bridge that failed to inspect. That was like a bridge yeah. on an interstate or yeah. something. It was a major bridge. Yeah. Same and, thing happened. And the trickle down was they closed the Clement Street Bridge for a year. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. That, to save the world from the Clement Street Bridge. And then three, they took three days to fix it a year later, and then they opened it up again. Yes. So, so we'd like to keep it open and keep it passing keep it, inspections. Yes. And, um, and then figure out what we can do long term. I would point out that, well, it's a low priority for the state. It's 3,000 uh, odd uh, trips a day here. And that traffic it closes, that traffic goes through the Pine Tree Bridge mm -hmm. or down to the center of the mountain. I, something mm -hmm. that it right. was really handy when the Pine Street Bridge needed some emergency fixes that kept it closed a little while longer. That would have been really inconvenient if that mm -hmm. bridge wasn't there at that point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we've had a, our question, the mayor's presented, we've had our questions of the mayor, we've had our sole member of the public make comment. Um, anything else you want to do while the public hearing is still open? And if not, would someone make a motion to close it? I move to close the public hearing. All right. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. And um, thanks for coming out. I don't uh, believe. I mean, the, the function of this was to have the public hearing and expose it to the public. I don't know that we need actually a recommendation on this because it just goes back to council. So I don't think we need to actually do anything with it other than have the function of holding the public hearing so that's been accomplished and then it will come back at our next uh, council meeting. And, and perhaps one thing for the mayor, if you would, if you guys would highlight a little, this has been a change that's been happening because in the past that all didn't come together but now the, the capital program comes with the general budget all at the same time, correct? Sure. Well, yeah, or we can. Yeah. Um. It. Do, I mean, it does. The actual budget itself for FY seventeen, 17. will be in the general fund budget. Will be in the general yeah. fund budget. But the capital budget for seventeen, the whole thing will come to us at one as one composite piece. Yes, it will. Okay. Yes. And actually, uh, the finance director wanted to just. I mentioned it earlier, but we are going to be bringing forward several orders um, in the next few meetings because either they're projects that have to be done over the summer at the schools. So we need to get them started a bit early so that they'll be ready to go in June. Or in some cases, they're ones that we need to borrow money for. So we have to get the orders complete so that our bond folks can get all of their so the money um, will be there for bids and everything so that they can go out to bid in June. I think, and which you is mentioned what they want the voice to over IP project. And that so one's going to come early too. That yes, come. that one's going to come. Um, and um, Mr. Pagan is waiting, just chomping at the bit to get that one done. We're actually looking at the state bid list now to get the vendors that we need for that and um, so that one as soon as we so probably April 7th we'll bring an order for that it's not going to require I don't think it's going to require two readings it's just going to be um, Which one? the voice over internet oh they all re they're the, borrowing so they they do they, they will need no what I'm saying is we don't need two readings on one night is what I'm oh, saying oh right 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 right. we're yeah. planning we're, on we're them too we're not we're not asking for any expedited we just want to get it started <laughs> earlier in the queue yeah we're, we're bonding for your previously approved Pulaski Park in June, and so since we're bonding, you want to roll this into the roll them all in. Awesome. Well, the rates are still good, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, any new business we did not anticipate? Seeing none, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Thank you.